Hey, I'm Alex Raffer from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Meg. And today we are reviewing Charcuterie from 3WS Games? 3WS Games? Mm -hmm. 3WS Games. I say it more confidently. Today we are reviewing Charcuterie from 3WS Games. Charcuterie is a 1-4 to four player, 2-6 to six player... I should start again. Oh my goodness. Charcuterie is a 2-6 to six player game of, well, making charcuterie boards. It's a point scoring game which you're going to be trying to basically delicately get all these various ingredients, put them onto your charcuterie boards, doing so based on the 6 goals that will be in play, as well as your own personal private goal that you selected at the beginning of the game. Across the course of the game, you're going to be engaging in drafting and creating little packages of goods. Each turn, players are going to take turns being the host in a general game, and it depends on player count. In a general game, you're going to have two opportunities to be the host throughout the course of the game. When you're the host, you're going to be gathering a bunch of tiles in the bag, and you're going to be laying them out on this little central board over here in order to create combinations, but then having the other players pick those combinations first. So it's an I cut you choose situation, where if you make a particularly compelling pile of goodies, someone else is getting that pile of goodies. So it's in your best interest to try to figure out how you're most likely to get something that leaves you happy no matter what. You're going to do that, taking turns, players going around. Again, it depends on player count, but you might be gathering three or four things around. They balance it out so that you're basically getting 24. I think at most player counts, you're going to be getting 24 ingredients across the course of the game. And that's what you're going to be trying to be mindful of, stacking those ingredients together or laying those ingredients on your charcuterie board in different forms to fulfill these various goals. And these goals have a bunch of various goals that will be in play. So you have a different, different ones for each category, but each category of item has one. So for example, right now, for each unique dip on your board, you're going to get points. For each pair of matching berries, you're going to get points. For each adjacent pair of a, of a cheese and a vegetable, you'll get points. All those will have different ways they score, and they're all going to have there's going to be different combinations of them, forcing you to re-examine what you're trying to gather and how you're trying to stack your charcuterie board every single round. And that's in addition to your private goal that you chose. This particular private goal is the fewer meat I collect, the more points I score. This particular person's a vegetarian. They want as little meat as possible on their charcuterie board. I think that's basically everything. Is there anything yeah. I missed? It's a very no. straightforward game. It's a very straightforward game. But with that, mm -hmm. we can dive into our review, starting off with, well, we start, We can dive into our review with, uh, you know, ease of play, what we like, don't like, and see others not liking, all of that. Uh, ease of play, I think you have a good idea right now, because I'm pretty sure I taught you everything you need to know mm -hmm. uh, for the game. I will say, even this little board over here actually gives you the various uh, stacks you're going to be combining based on your player count. So you don't even need to reference the rule book once you know how to do that, because that information is right in front of you. A very easy game to teach, very easy game to play. Plays in around 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the player count and how much time you want to take chatting or possibly engaging in your own charcuterie boards while you make your charcuterie board. I think for ease of play too, it's also very accessible for the theme that if you're trying to get non-gamers into games, like this is something that you can even explain easily and say fruit and bread and you're not working with like, you know, space terms or something like noctum and oculin and whatever. Or even just meeples. Bread. Even just meeples. Yeah. It's not a commonly known term despite yeah. uh anyways. Uh anyways, so that's basically ease of play. As far as what we like, don't like, and see those not liking, starting off with what we like, what do you like with the game? I think it's very charming. Um, like I said, I think that it's great as a game to be a gateway game and get other people into gaming that aren't gamers. And I think it is, it hits everything it needs to for that. It has these goals and objectives that you're going for. It has set collection. It has kind of, I cut you take drafting, yep. kind of. Um, and I think that it's a lot of core mechanics in gaming, but it's also so accessible that I think for regular gamers, it's something pretty casual that you can play and, you know, maybe enjoy a snack, things like that, and have it be an opener for the night. But I really think as like a gift or something like that, as a gateway game at a, at something that isn't a board game thing, like a family party and stuff like that, I just think it's really great. Yeah, I completely agree with you, especially on the theme. Because I think there's a lot of things I'll get into in terms of what I like about the game. A few things maybe I don't like or not as impressed by. But the, to me, the standout is, like you said, the theme. The combination, the implementation of theme and mechanics here make this an easy game to understand that, that makes it appealing. It's not scaring people off with your dragons or alternatively you're planting crops for, for your game, whatever it is. This is the kind of game you can get behind because you're like, oh, we're making a little charcuterie board. It's fun to do. It kind of reminds me a bit like Canvas to a degree where you have this aspect where it almost doesn't matter that you happen be playing for points there's something completely mm -hmm. separate from the point structure that can keep people invested so i think they did a bang out job of like not the theme and 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 mechanics went really well together it's almost that thing like when you're playing a drafting game even if you're not completely in it but you get like the cat you're like i have a cat with this it's like well i love ranch so i'll take the ranch and i love blue cheese that yeah. can't be wrong to take and it's usually not wrong there are more right and less right things as far as the scoring but mm -hmm. something will score you points and it's a good way of getting people into that vibe. You're like, oh, I scored a bunch of points. Oh, 
oh, if I did this next time, I think I actually would combine that extra meat. I see, I see how that works. Mm -hmm. And you might have people who want to dive into it again now that they've had fun doing the thing, but also want to go ahead and play it a bit more. And on that aspect, I think something else that's really great about the game is that you are able to constantly reshuffle your board. Yes. So you aren't locked into how you place things. There are placing restrictions where uh, every piece needs to actually be touching the board, so you can't have one in the middle like that off fl free floating. Um, and you also have to be able to see 50% of the tile. But this does get very, very full. And I think that it is great that you can constantly rearrange because, again, it makes it very accessible to new players. Yeah, I do almost wonder why there's not like a variant where you are locked in as you go. It would make it a very different game, and you can make it your own variant if you want. Mm -hmm. But but I agree with you. That's, that wouldn't be the ideal way to play to begin with. Uh, for me, for other things I like, I think you've touched upon one of them already, which is the I cut, you choose mechanic. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's not just a point scoring game, you get a bunch of tiles, and now you have to sit there and construct these little mini piles that are tempting to other players while hopefully leaving you with what you want. That's a fun little choose that I generally enjoy in games. It forces the player to be as balanced as possible. It really gives you a lot of things to consider or think about as you play through it. And so I, I like the implementation of the I cut, you choose over here, and how it's done. And then for me, the other thing I'll touch upon is I really love the variable scoring goals. Games like this, I find that if you're going for the same thing consistently, it can get very dry very quickly. You know exactly what to do each time. I'm trying to get a set of a cheese, a salami, and a bread, and that's what I just want to do. The variable scoring goals and the fact that you're keeping in mind six different goals plus your own private little thing over here, mm -hmm. that's going to give you a lot to consider, which means the game is still as light and accessible as it needs to be, but it forces you to re-examine the puzzle every time you play it. Yeah, I also... Something for me is that I really enjoy polyomino games, and those can be very rigid with their shapes. And this one is very fluid. Like, there are some, like, the fruit are all different kinds of shapes, and it is pretty fun that you need to find a way to maneuver them all, fit them all on the board by the end, but the shapes are, like, kind Bizarre. of a question mark. You can't really plan on certain things coming out, and sometimes mm -hmm. your plate can be super full. Um, and to that, I something that I also really enjoyed is that with the scoring, they did different things where... There is scoring for grouping. So for example here, for each unique cheese in a group of cheese, so if I had these two cheeses together, then they would both score. And that's in a group because they're touching. But for this one, it's for a pair of matching fruit, and pairs aren't touching. So you can kind of go between the pairs and the groups and set up your groups together to score really well and be stacked and offset it with different pairs on the other side of the board. Yeah, it's very, very fluid. As far as, well, it's actually interesting because the last thing you touched upon, well, well, speaking of which, are you done with the things you like? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Moving to things you don't like because I, I, I kind of have a direct follow-up to the thing you said over there, which is you touched upon how it's not really polyominoes, it's more, it's more fluid, and I think that is a good thing, but it is one of the things that can lend itself a bit to uh, almost like an AP, analysis paralysis, taking forever trying to min-max or optimize. Uh, when you do have something rigid like polyomino, something that's more strict, it's just kind of like, this is how it goes. Sometimes in this game, you can get to the scoring phase and have a tendency to be like, well, if I move this here, it's going to be 50% covering that. And if I get this here, it's touching both of those, but it's also touching the table. Well, I can do this. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Wait, but no, if I get this here, that's an extra point. Can I, can I reconfigure this to move that in? Like, you'll have things like this where because of the less strict nature of things, sometimes you feel like you can get just a drop more in terms of point scoring. And it gives you that agency to just take a little bit more time just to get that one extra point then is a fun experience. It might be optimal, but it's less fun. But to be fair, you don't score until the end of the game. Yeah. So oh, this is only between the, the, the three rounds of drafting, yeah. you're fine until the very end. So I don't think that's too much to spend a little bit of time with your puzzle that you've been working on. Yeah, that's definitely only an end of game issue. Uh, outside of that, for me, the only thing I really have is not really a complaint. It's less of a complaint or more of a commentary on where this game is mechanic wise in the board game space because I think there are a lot of point scoring optimization games out there. There's a lot of games that give you like six, seven things to consider and then try to figure out how you can get all those things to score as many points as possible. I don't think charcuterie mechanically alone, I don't think it's the best one in the space. I would say it's decent. It's a good game in the space. It does a good job. For me, the standout aspect of this is the theme and implementation combined. The, the mm -hmm. theme mechanics combined as a full package, I think really does a standout job at sticking out because of that. Like this is a kind of starter game to your night, either a gateway game to your friends or starter game to the night while you grab the food that you don't care about. Like, I recommend, if you are a gamer with this game, I highly recommend you make this the game that you are okay having food at the table. <laughs> Trust me, you'll have a lot more fun. Yeah. Your other games can be precious. You'll have a lot more fun if you just like, this is where yeah. you start off. A little bit yeah. of wine and cheese, start yeah. the night off, and then you dive into blood rage after that. That was going to be one of my dislikes, is that it just makes me hungry. Well, it it's makes a game me want to eat. You want to eat. This yeah. is a game. It, it makes really you want to sit down and snack a bit. Really. Maybe not yeah. Cheetos. You don't need the Cheetos. But other things are... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't you once eat Cheetos on camera? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that now. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> For sure. 
flashbacks. Anyways, uh, but yeah, that's that's gonna be the only other thing. It's not really again, it's not really a critique, more of a commentary. If you are looking for the best point scoring optimization game, I don't think this is that. I think this is, falls into a very specific space and is very good at what it's trying to do. Mm -hmm. As far as we can see, others not liking anything in that category. Uh, so for me, the only thing is, and it is part of why I think it's so charming, but because some of the shapes can be such different sizes, like the grapes versus the blackberries and mm -hmm. stuff, I find that some tiles come out together. So if you look at what's here on the offer board right now, none of these are actually scoring well at all for this. Um, this is for each bread adjacent to a meat, and there's literally one on the board. And besides that, everything is kind of scoring not much. Um, this is for each unique uh, dip, dip and, and there's one, one. so you can see that sometimes the tiles that come out really don't work well with the scoring so I think depending on the player count and how many tiles are coming out it might actually be really tricky to try to get points depending on what comes out uh, but that being said you are kind of all on a similar footing um, that, that was my only thing is that there's almost maybe too many ingredients for the shapes to be so different and hard to randomize from the bag. Which is kind of similar to my only real complaint as far as what I can see being an issue for you, is that luck of the draw aspect to a degree, mm -hmm. where especially early game is a little different because early game you're building things out and so whatever piles are made, you kind of work towards something, you choose, you have agency, and you work your way around that. Towards the end game, the piles that come out just might not be favorable for you, but they might be favorable to others, and this can be a tight enough game that someone else scoring an extra three points is the difference in the game, and they may have just gotten that on the luck of the draw, mm -hmm. which is n the nature of this type of game. It's a little on the lighter side, and there's some degree of luck, uh, luck of the draw involved. As far as final thoughts and rating, where are you on this one? I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really charming. I really like how accessible it is. I think that because of that, it's one that can get a lot more play with different groups of people that I play games with that are non-gamers. I think for me, I can I can take over all you think. Yeah. Uh, for me, so so I, I am in that I didn't weird think space. think about it. I am in that weird space. I don't disagree. So so for context, I'll say Canvas is a game to me, and this is a random random note. But Canvas is another game that again I think it's very good in terms of point scoring variety, similar optimization. There's some similar overlaps here. But Canvas to me is a game, and, and, and the fact that you can play it just for the sake of the fun of putting together pieces of art, and then also play it for the mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. And that's a game that I'm really bringing up here specifically, is I gave that game, originally when I first played it, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I was like, I like it, and over time it continued to grow on me and impress me in terms of how much I played it. Mm -hmm. Where I am with this one right now is that's still a 3.5 out of 5. I'm not willing to bump it up to a 4 yet, but it... I am st I'm doing so with that knowledge that gameplay-wise, mechanic-wise, it's a 3.5, it's a fun game, I'm happy to play it, I think it's still in the rotation for right now, but I, I don't know yet whether I am more impressed with the theme and implementation on behalf of how it can be impactful to others, meaning as a gateway game for yourself, for your friends, whatever it is, like I am very impressed with that, is that the kind of thing that pulls me enough to play? Because with Canvas, I was in a similar space, and then over time, I was like, I always want to play Canvas. Something about the game always works for me. So this might go up over time. I don't know how that plays out, but for right now, it's a 3.5. Kind of want to give it a 4, but I'm, I'm bumping it at a 3.5 for right now. Yeah, I was between 3.5 and a 4, and I think I'm still going to land at 3.5 because for me, for everything that it delivers, like mechanics are great, it all works well, but it just doesn't deliver enough of a punch for me to ask to play this. Mm. It's one that I think I would actually suggest and show to people like my sister and things like that. So I do think it will actually get tabled, which is why it's in that kind of a funny place. Um, but for me personally, I'm not sure if I would say, hey, can we really play this tonight? So I think that's where it kind of lands. Yep. And then for recommendations, do you have any recommendations lined up? Because I, oh, I, I got some. I might steal you... Alex's. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. Take yours first. So, uh, Really delicious game that makes you very, very hungry with a lot of great set collection that can be a bit cutthroat. Sushi Go! Oh, Sushi Go Party is great, um, and I think I would choose that over this um, because it is just a little bit more nuanced with the the drafting. So you draft a card of ten, ten, a hand of ten cards, um, and you do that three times, and you're trying to serve the best sushi. It's a great choice. It's a great choice. For me, I'm not going to say cannabis because I've been talking about this the entire time anyway. Did you what... think Sushi Go? No, oh. I thought what you, what you started to say, I was like, maybe you're taking the one I'm taking? <laughs> uh, no, the one I was thinking of is Waffle Time. Mm -hmm. Waffle Time from mm -hmm. AEG. Mm -hmm. It has a similar idea of the uh, set collection, uh, not set collection, of the scoring variety. We have different goals you're trying to accomplish, and you are slowly layering different waffles on the board. You're putting on waffles, putting on different like toppings and cream and all these berries and lining them mm -hmm. up in different ways. Uh, I think it's less charming than this one, actually, so I think I probably recommend charcuterie yeah, I, over Waffle I would, Time. I would pick charcuterie over Waffle Time. But I would say if you do find yourself liking charcuterie and you want more games like that, I think Waffle Time is an excellent next step. It is called Waffle Time, right? Is it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Off time, yeah. I mean, so I'm, I'm, for some reason, I blanked. I was like, maybe it's not the call that. It's called off time from uh, AEG. Anyways, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Mag, and I'm about to drive down to Whole Foods for a charcuterie board. Are you really? I think I might. <laughs>